everyone, Miss Dummer here. Our I can statement is I can find the area of complex figures. I promise this is really simple. We're pretty much going to be putting everything we've learned so far this unit, we're going to be putting it all together. So if you do not have this note sheet out yet, I would refer to that. Because when finding complex figures, we make these shapes with our complex figure, and then we break them up into what we already know. So let's get started. Number one here, I want you to think of a way that I can break this complex figure up in two different shapes. Now think about what we already know. I broke mine up right there. You may have broke it up somewhere else, that's totally fine. Now what you do is you simply just find the area of each of those. So like this right here, I'm going to find the area of 22 times 23 in this box. The area right here, I'm going to do 20 times 20. Okay? So 22 times 23, 3 times 2 gives me 6, 3 times 2 again gives me 6. We add a 0 since we're moving place value. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 again is 4, and we add that up. 6 plus 4 is 10, that gives me 5. This gives me 506. Now 20 times 20 gives us 400. If you need to go down here and show your work, that's totally fine. 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0. I add a 0 for place value, 0 times 2 is 0, and 2 times 2 is 4. Add that up, that gives me 400. Now once you get this far and you found the area of all your little figures that you found inside there, then you add everything up. So I'm going to take 506 plus 400. I get 609. 906, and then do not forget your label, meters squared. I chose meters because this right here, that M, tells me is meters, and then squared because we're finding the area. Now if you're like, oh, I really get this, I'm going to try 2 and 3 on my own. If you're like, eh, I still need some help from Ms. Demmer, then just follow along with me on number 2, and then I really challenge you to try number 3 on your own. Now, think of a way that you can break this up again. I chose right there. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, this whole thing is 4, so now what's this and what's this? Okay, we're going to figure that out. If this right here is 2, we talked about how rectangles have two different sides that are parallel to each other. So this right here also has to be 2. This whole length is 4. 2 plus what gives me 4? Well, 2. So this side length also has to be 2. But then we have this side length here where we still don't know what that is. Well, right here is 2, so right here also has to be 2. Then this side length right here where it ends, it says this is 2, so that has to be 2. 2 plus 2 gives me 4. So that's where we get our 4 there. So I'm going to find the area of this rectangle here, which is 4 times 2, which gives me 8. And of this square here, which 2 plus 2 gives me 4. 8 plus 4 gives me 12. Now that I've added them up, because we found the area of this and this, we add them up, that gives me 12 feet squared. Now I got feet because right there that tells me feet. Okay? Now number three, pause it. Make sure that you're doing it correctly. I'm going to show you how I did it. I broke it up right here. 50 times 30 is going to be in this box. And 30 times 30 is going to be in this square. So 30 times 30, an easy way to do it, only when you have zeros right here is you can add two zeros. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, that's one way. If you like to do it the traditional way like we did it over here, that's totally fine. Same thing with 50 times 30. I'm going to show you that trick again. We have two zeros here, so I can add my two zeros. 5 times 3 is 15. So we have 1,500 and 900, and then I have to add the two up.
9 plus 5 is 14. Carry the 1. That gives me 2. 2,400. And again, I have centimeters squared here due to my centimeters there. Now, if you're really getting the hang of this, I challenge you right now to do the next three problems that we're going to do on your own. Now, as you notice, on number four, there's going to be a triangle there. If you're like, ooh, I, I kind of want to go through it with Miss Demmer just to make sure I'm doing it right with the triangles, that's totally fine. Okay? So number four, I want you to think of a way that you can break that figure up. Okay, that's where I chose to break it up. So right here, I know this is going to be 12 times 6, but I'm looking over here, and I have no idea what my base is for that triangle. Well, I know my height, this and this is parallel, so this has to be 12. Now this right here is 6, and this whole thing is 12, which we get from right there. So 6 plus what gives me 12? Well, that's got to be 6. Well, 12 times 6 gives us 72. And remember, if you look at your note sheet, area, we take 6 times 12, but then we times it by half because it's half of a rectangle or half of a parallelogram. Because if I would add another triangle there, we notice that we'd have a rectangle. So that's why we take half of it because it's just half of a parallelogram or a rectangle. So we already know 12 times 6 is 72. Half of 72 is 36. Now if you needed to divide that by 2 to figure that out, that's totally fine. 2 goes into 7 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. I subtract that. 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring my, my 2. 2 goes into 12 6 times. 6 times 2 is 12. And then I have no remainder. Now that I found that, I'm going to add up those two numbers. 72 plus 36. 6 plus 2 is 8. 7 plus 3 is 10. I get 108 yards squared. Now number 5 and 6, I really want you to do these two on your own. And then come back and look how I did it. So I would pause the video right now and make sure that you're doing it correctly. Okay, I broke my figure up right here. Now, I know that my height for this right here is going to be 11, but I don't know what this space is down here. So I'm going to go over to my triangle. This 9, if this were a whole rectangle, they would be parallel to each other, so I'd have a 9 here. The height of this and this would be parallel, so that would have to be 11. Now, since this whole thing is 20, i got to figure out what this side length is right here. So I would do 20 minus 9 to get 11 right here. So we have a square in that box. 11 times 11 gives me 121. Now again, we have a triangle. Remember, we times that by half because it's half of what we have. So we would have 11 times 9, which gives us 99. Then we take half of that. Now a lot of kids struggle because we're going to get a decimal here. 2 goes into 9, I'm going to show you the traditional way, and then I'm going to show you another way to think of it. 2 goes into 9 4 times. 4 times 2 is 8. I subtract that, that gives me 1. I bring down the 9. 2 goes into 19. That goes in 9 times. That gives me 18. I subtract. I have 1. We're going to have to add a decimal here, so I add my decimal, and I add a zero, and I bring the zero down. Two goes into ten five times, and now we're good to go. So this right here gives me 49 and a half. Another way that you can think of it, which reminds me of our number talks that we do in class, 99 is really close to 100. It's really only one away. So if I would think of that, we know this number is going to be really close to 50. Well, I only have to subtract 1. Well, two halves make 1. So if I just take half away, that's how I could get 40 from 50. That's how I could get 49 and a half. You could totally think of it that way too. Use our number sense. 
Now that we have 49 and a half and 121, we add them up. Now remember, when we add them up, notice we always line up our decimals. 121, there's really a decimal behind there. We just don't show that because we don't need to. We line up our decimals and then we always fill in our blanks with zero. That gives us five, 10, seven, one, and then we bring that decimal point straight down. When adding and subtracting, we always line up our decimals. When multiplying and dividing, we don't have to line up our decimals. So we get 170 and a half meters squared. Now looking at number six, same thing. Figure out a way where you can break it up. And you may have to break up problems in more than just two. That's totally fine. So right here, I have four and a half times six. Then right here, well, if this is three, that means right here, if I had a, from top to bottom, that would also have to be three. And four and a half and four and a half, we would put that there. Now that triangle is gonna be four and a half times three times a half. Well, we have to figure this out first. Notice how the decimals are not lined up when you multiply. Five times three gives me 15. Four times three gives me 12, plus one more is 13. Move my decimal one. No decimal here, we have a total of one. We get 13 and a half. Now I have to divide this by two to figure out. Now I could think of it two different ways. First way, two can't go into one, put an X there. Two goes into 13, two, or six times, sorry. We bring our decimal point up since we have no decimal here. That gives me 12. Subtract, bring down the five. Two goes into 15 seven times. We get one, bring a zero since we have nothing there and that gives us five. We're gonna get six and 75 hundredths. Okay, another way you can think of that is 13's close to four, or 13 and a half is really close to 14, so half of 14 is seven, so I know my answer has to be somewhere close to seven. That would help you to make sure that you're getting semi-close to the answer, okay? And our six and 75 hundredths is very close. Then we have our four and a half times six. Same thing. I put it up against my wall and notice my decimals are not lined up. Five times six is 30. Six times four is 24. Plus three more is 27. Move this one place over. We have zero here. Move that over one place, we get 27. Now I'm gonna add these two up. I have 27 plus six and 75 hundredths. We put our decimal at the end of that 27, we don't need to show that. And then I always fill it in with zeros. We have five, seven, 13, three. So I get 33 and 75 hundredths feet squared. If you have any questions about any of this, please, please, please let me know. I am gonna go over the home link and explain what it looks like so you understand that. And then you can get started on it. taking a little while to load. Sometimes when I have it like this, it takes a little while. Oop. Okay, once you get here, you're gonna find the area of these different complex figures. I do want you to do the try this. Think of it like this maybe. You could do it another way. Okay. 
or think of it not like that but take this line out well, what did I do here my pen's not working right now but if you would take this line out and just keep that line think of it like that okay then the next thing that you're gonna do right here is make sure you line up those decimals when we add and subtract we line up decimals okay if you have any questions please let me know have a great rest of your day